Hi, so I just wanted to go over some of the instructions for the landscaping project since it uses a browser app that, um, again, you've probably never tried to use before unless you were doing any kind of gardening projects through Better Homes and Gardens. I thought uh, having a little video reference might be helpful for some folks. So it says here, you will be designing a landscape for a particular space in Kansas. So use the application located at this link to help you build your landscape. So when I click on that, it takes me to the Better Homes and Gardens Plan Your Garden um, tool, basically. So you will have to try to set up an account. So when I um, have students set this up, you can set it up either using your school email or if you have an email that you use for like junk email, that's what I would recommend for using for setting this up. Again, it just wants to get your information to try and send you um, emails about Better Homes and Gardens, like trying to get a, a subscription to it or sending ads to your house. So <clears throat> when you're completing the form below, again, you could try to log in with Facebook if you prefer, but I'm gonna try to do it with email. And like I said, I would recommend doing it with just your school email. So for instance, I can set it up with my school email um, L. Conroy at tps501.org. It mentions here that I'm already a member of the site. So again, I'm going to have to use a different email here. I'm just going to use Mr. Fulbright's really quick. Hopefully he won't mind. So again, then you want to create a password. Again, just create something that's very easy for you to remember. It's not going to be very important for it to be a complicated password. I would uncheck all of these boxes as far as signing up for different newsletters um, and unclick this one about I don't want to collect any news from there. You know, create a junk password that's easy to remember. Hit continue. So again, let me come up with just a little made up password for this one. Okay, it does actually want a little bit of complication here with the password. It has to be at least six characters long and must contain at least one special capital letter or special character. So again, I'll create one like that instead. Again, just try to make one that's easy for you to remember, or you can have your browser try to remember the password so it's not as complicated later on. So now it should load up with the actual garden app. So at this point, we'll try and keep the video further down to make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. We'll go ahead and kind of go off book out of the tutorial here so we can just kind of look through some of the main features that you'll want to use for this assignment. So again, here I can click change background. Um, so I can change it. Let's say that I want to use this house instead. So again, you can't, uh, there are some that aren't available because this is the free version, you can't upload your own photo, but you've got a selection of different houses that you can use. And again, for this project, we can pretend that it's a business instead of a home, if you would prefer to kind of talk about, you know, what the functions would be for a business. So right off the bat, you have lots of different plants that you can select from. So again, this selection right now is showing all of the different types because it's set to all, but I can limit it to conifers. So just evergreen trees, um, that will stay healthy all year. Trees, a lot of the trees in this one are tropical. So again, make sure that you're restricting it to ones that would survive well in Kansas. I can move down to shrubs. So again, kind of the shorter, um, usually deciduous plants that can kind of help fill out the landscape. Azaleas, so very specific flowers and bushes, I should say. Vines, so again, for covering certain areas. And you'll notice as you're going through these different selections, the ones with this little lock symbol, those are not available in the free version. But you still even get a lot of variety in the free version, so don't worry too much about that. Perennials, um, so again, flowers that are going to come back, uh, or perennials being the ones that uh, will come back repeatedly. Bulbs and annuals, ones that will die off for a certain time of the year and may either come back or you may need to replant. And then veggies and herbs. Again, this one is completely restricted off, but I wouldn't worry too much about it and just focus on some of the other ones that you can look at. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add a tree into this one for starting off, maybe kind of helping to block out glare from the window. Again, if we're thinking about environmental factors. So let's say I go for this Alberta spruce. When I click on it here in the plant selection, I can drag and drop it here 
And of course, in this case, they've made it look very tiny. So let me move the video down here just a little bit. So I can click on the question mark here. It tells me information that I want to know about the spruce. Again, it gives me its scientific name, its usual height. So I know it's about three foot 11. Um, it's light requirements, so it can deal with full sun or partial sun. And again, you can select options for the type of light, you know, full light, half light, or shadow, depending on which part of the house it's being used at. So again, you can look at those factors, or you can just select all if you want a lot of variety. And then now I can click this plant, and maybe, you know, I'll allow this one to grow decently tall, or if I want to think about three foot relative to this house, it might have a decent height to it. So maybe enough to at least block part of the window here. So I can use these tools to increase or decrease the size. If I decide, eh, I don't really want this spruce, I can click the trash can icon to get rid of it. So again, those are the main tools that you'll want to use for these types of plants. And again, sometimes they'll start off really tiny. So make sure that you're clicking it, you know, until you get this little menu to get it to the size that you want it. So I'll put one here. Maybe I'll add a second one to also block off that other window. And again, the layering in this one is far. Oh, this one increased way more than I wanted it to, but I can decrease it again. That's no problem. So again, you may not always get, and again, if you click right outside of it, it's going to just create a new one. So let me click this one, get rid of it, and then I'll just try and click on here to try and hopefully get off of that plant. Sometimes the tools on this can be a little bit frustrating until you pick a new plant. But again, I think you'll get it with a little bit of practice. <clears throat> so let's take a look at other options. So I can select based on size. Again, this is showing um, all the different sizes of conifers. Let me go back to all plants. So I can, let's say that I want to offset some of these bigger things with a smaller thing. So now I click small. And so now it's showing me a few different flowers I can select from. Let's say I want to do some common lavender kind of around here. Now, as you're going through and selecting your plants, an important thing to consider is what we're looking for in the assignment as far as you keeping track of these plants. So as you're looking at the project, make sure that each time you select a plant and you're like, yeah, I'm good with that one, um, add it to your list here. So again, I could add common lavender as one of the plants in my list. You want at least 10 to make sure that you have a variety, but you can go with more than 10 if you want to. It's kind of up to you. But this way, I'll know which plants you decided to use for your particular project. So besides adding plants to this project, um, and again, you can add any variety of things, the shrubs, the trees, vines, anything that you have access to. We also want to add some hardscapes to it as well. So again, if you look down here at this bottom part, it says, what hardscapes did you decide to use? Again, you want to use a minimum of five for this one to help with functionality. Now, if I click on the structures tab, this shows me a few very specific things. So um, some of them are little outdoor structures like gazebos that you can sit at or gates. Some of them are fencing or decorative items like pots, fountains. So let's say that I wanted to go with just something like a little birdhouse here to help attract birds. So when I plant that one to the house, man, they make it really tiny. But again, make sure that you click on it. You'll know you're clicking on the right thing if it tells you here, hey, it's the birdhouse. I can start to increase its size. If it's one that has, I believe this one is to help flip it. Yeah, it flips the image. Again, if, if you have something that's a little bit more um, like here, if we look at this shed, there we go. There's the shed. And let me make it bigger. Again, maybe I'm like, well, I don't want this shed facing this way. Oh, I definitely don't want it that big. Sometimes it's a little slow to respond to the commands you give it. But let's say I don't want it flipping this way because it's too in the way of the house. Aha, now I can flip it this way. And so now it, it faces a little bit more like how I want it to with these doors over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, you can use that tool to kind of flip the image. This one here just lets you set colors, but I would just keep it at the default. I wouldn't mess around too much with that. Again, you can delete it if you want. So again, you have some options there. Um, but besides having these different structures, another type of hardscape that you might want to consider are the pathways. So again, click on textures. There aren't a lot of textures that are available in the free version, but if you look carefully, you can see some like old brick, red brick, stones, irregular, 
just the lawn if you want grass in certain areas. So let's say that I want a brick pathway between the entrance to this house and this shed. I can click red brick and then I just drag the tool along where I want it to create a little pathway. So now I've got a functional pathway that helps lead between the shed and the house. I can differentiate that by clicking on the lawn tool and now boom, I've got grass growing in here. And this is all something that you can set up after your plants, but you might even want to set it up before your plants if you want, just to make certain things clear as far as where roads and pathways are. So this little red brick path, I could count as one of my hardscapes because the paths are important for that kind of thing. I can count the shed, I can count the birdhouse. Those are all things that I can list in this part. I wouldn't count the grass for the landscape component as far as the plants, because again, there's lots of different varieties of grass and grass is not really that um, easy to kind of pin down in a landscaping sense. The parts that are more important when we're looking at aesthetics usually are, you know, the trees, bushes. There are some ground covers that are grass and ornamental grasses, but regular just lawn, I just wouldn't count that part in. So again, this should give you a pretty good idea of most of the tools. Again, for the brush on these tools for like the lawn or the brick, you can amplify like how big the circle is for what you're drawing with this. So there's a big circle. There's a little circle if you want fine detail work. There's an eraser if you want to get rid of that stuff. As with any function, if you want to undo the last thing that you did, just click undo up here at the top. All of these different functions are kind of your main functions. If I want to save my progress as I'm going along, if you're doing this over several class periods, this button is your friend. So I can click save project name. I can call this landscape one, save it. And so it'll hold on to that landscape for me. I definitely recommend this one. If you feel like you'll only get partway through on this, just save as much as you can. If I click save again, I can keep the project name, save it, and it'll update it. And then that way, if I have to come back to it on a different class period, I can click the open button. Oh, there's landscape one. I can open that up and load it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So at the very end, when you're done setting everything up and you think, okay, this looks great. Um, you need to include a picture for me to be able to see. Now you can take a screenshot, but what's even easier in this app, if you click on this option here, if you click download image JPEG, I'll click on that. And you can see, kind of it, I, I'm not sure if it's showing up down here at the bottom, but here it showed image.jpg. It basically um, saved a version of this photo that I can use to submit with my assignment. So it would just have the content that is in the picture. So again, that's a very easy way to show me an image of what your landscape looks like. Because again, I just kind of want to see that everything works in it. I want to see what you're proud of here. You can also click this one here, export plant list. So if you're going back and you're like, man, I'm not sure which plants I used on this one when you're filling out number two, you can look here at these options. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I had common lavender, I had dwarf Alberta spruce. So I can go back and add that one in. Okay. And then there's other functions like zooming, um, it's already showing labels for each one, which is good. So again, these are, are mostly just little um, tools that will help with certain pieces of what you're looking at here. So again, they're things that I would recommend for this. If you have any other questions as you're going through this assignment, again, please don't hesitate to ask in class or shoot me an email. Um, either one is fine, but I wish you good luck with making your landscape. Hope to see some really um, nice functional and aesthetically pleasing pieces and we will let you go ahead and work from here.